참가해 주셔서 감사합니다. <웃음> okay. Um, yeah. So, okay. I'm supposed to talk. I'm planning to talk about this type of knot diagrams. And okay, here is a brief outline of what I was planning to talk. So I will briefly only sketch something about di everywhere different knot diagrams. So th this is not something that, that I can talk interestingly for a very long time. And then I will concentrate more on the everywhere equivalent knot diagrams by discussing previously the special case of every trivia. And then I will talk about generalizations of these concepts to links and about two partial results as far as I have time uh, for three braids and two component links. Okay, <laughs> so we start rather generally, okay, what is a knot and what is a link is relatively well known. Okay. Uh, so I will consider an, a crossing switch, okay, and uh, I maybe sh should distinguish these crossings from those crossings, okay, this is, these crossings are called positive, these are called negative. Okay. I assume that the links are oriented. Okay. Um, and, uh, okay. So the, these are basic definitions that I'm going to discuss. Okay. For everywhere, trivial diagrams means okay, all the diagrams D prime for a diagram D, which are obtained by one crossing chain, should represent the unknot. Okay. Okay, so, <laughs> and Everywhere equivalent is supposed to mean all the diagrams D prime that are obtained by switching one crossing should represent the same knot. Okay. Now this was defined by I think more or less defined by Tanyama, or at least he was interested in this type of okay, this type of diagram. Okay. <laughs> and everywhere different is essentially the opposite of the of everywhere equivalent. So all the diagrams that you obtain by switching one crossing should represent different knots. Okay, and or links, okay, about the link case I will talk later. Okay. Of course, if you're given a diagram, it is in general easy to check. Okay, okay. So you have, you have, uh, you switch one crossing, so if D has N crossings, then you have N diagrams D prime, and then you can take some invariant and distinguish them. Okay, <laughs> so to find that some diagram is generally everywhere different is not so difficult. Okay. So the question was <laughs> raised by Tanyama and also by, by Ishii um, independently, <laughs> how to construct everywhere uh, infinitely many okay, such diagrams. Okay, so examples. Okay, and I just briefly mentioned, okay, I have several constructions of this. Okay, here is one which is where the proof is relatively simple. Yeah, all, all constructions go like this. I, I take some tango. Okay, uh, the tango means two n endpoints, so not necessarily four endpoints. In my case here I have six endpoints. And then uh, I close it up, this tangle, by, by the braid sigma 1, sigma 2 inverse to the n. So what does this mean? Okay, I have my tangle T here, okay? This has three inputs and three outputs, and then I plug in n copies of this. Okay, so you have one, you have two, you do it n times, okay, and then you close. Okay. Of course, you must be careful that this doesn't respect the orientation. Okay. So the orientation in a braid, usually the orientation is like this. Okay. This doesn't need to be here. So in fact, you see that here in this tangle, one strand goes, uh, goes in and goes out on the other side, or on the same side. So the orientation will not be always up. Okay. But it doesn't matter. You can do this, and if you take 3, n is equal to 3k plus 1, and you get some alternating knot diagram, and in fact, you can... Uh, proof that these are everywhere are different. Okay. So this this one had a <laughs> very simple proof. Okay. This was about one page. Okay. And essentially because this is alternating and I could use Menasco Thistle Drain. Okay. So here is another okay. oh. here is another example okay. which was studied by, by Tanyama and Shinjo. Okay. So <laughs> now you take this tango and then you then you compose it with copies of this. Okay. So T prime, you have. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so you take one copy of this tangle and take n copies of those, put them in a row and then close them up. Okay. And this gives you some alternating diagram, and 
uh, Shinju and Tanyama had verified that for d equal to for for n equal to one, this is everywhere different. Okay. So <laughs> I was able to prove that for almost all n, this is this is an uh, this is everywhere different. Okay. And um, the, the proof is rather technical, so you have to. I use tem temporary leap category, and then I evaluate the Kaufman bracket. So essentially, the Jones polynomial in some very particular value, where I can do some diagonalization and eigenvalue estimates. Okay, and this also works for some non-alternating diagrams. So this approach using temporary leap category does not restrict me to alternating. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> so this is everything I would say about everywhere different. So the, the more interesting story is about every way equivalent. Okay, and I start, uh, start first by a special case that I studied with Nikos Kitas some long time ago with, with a different motivation. This was the case when all the diagrams that you s obtain by switching one crossing represent the unknown. Okay. So here are some examples. Okay. <laughs> the trefoil diagram is so. Whatever crossing you switch, you unknown. The Fogger figure eight diagram is so. Whatever crossing you switch, you get the unknown. Okay. So here is a, a rather somewhat more exotic one. Okay. This is a seven crossing diagram. You see obviously that this is an unknown diagram. So it is already unknotted, but it is also true that whatever crossing you switch, you still get the unknown. Okay. So and the question that we had with uh, Nikos at the time was, uh, can you say something, I mean, can you describe this? Can you, can you describe what are these diagrams? Okay. And <laughs> You see in this example, okay, you, you have a diagram which is already unknotted. So this diagram represents the unknot. It represents the unknot also after switching any single crossing, but it is already unknotted before you switch the crossing. Okay. And <laughs> the point is that such diagrams are very, there are very many such diagrams. Okay. So you can start with this kind of example, and then you can produce more complicated ones by doing this, for example. <laughs> and, uh, by using some idea of, of Shinjo and Tanyama, I was able also to construct a little bit better examples where you don't have this, okay, this uh, fragment where you can re reduce by the Eidemeister 2 move. Okay. So, so the point is, okay, is you can construct such examples. Okay. And there are too many. Okay. So you cannot expect to, to give any good classification of these diagrams. Okay. But the other case is much more intriguing. This is the case when you have the diagram is knotted. Okay, so you saw, we saw before, fi so figure 8 knot diagram and trefoil diagrams are everywhere, tr everywhere trivial and they represent a non-trivial knot. Okay, so in fact there are, there are a couple of more. So here are six diagrams that we found. Okay, these are two trefoil diagrams and there are four figure 8 knot diagrams. Okay. <laughs> and the question is, is this everything? So you can verify that, that essentially this list stops. Okay? There is nothing more complicated here. Okay, so we verified up to 14 crossings. Later I was able to verify up to 18 crossings. Then you can prove for, for Rational and Montesinos for, for some type of diagrams that uh, using some classification results that <laughs> this is exhaustive. You can prove it for diagrams of low genus. I probably have no time to discuss this. And for also for three braid diagrams. Okay, maybe if I have time at the end, I will discuss it. But uh, I, pre I think that you would prefer to go to have dinner rather than listen to me. So <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> so okay. So this is this was uh, the case of everywhere trivial diagrams. Okay. So and these results here are part of more general results that I want to discuss in the context of every equivalent diagrams. Okay, so I recall every equivalent is supposed to mean whatever crossing you change, you, rep you get diagram that represents the same knot. Okay. So, and the question is more or less, I mean, I don't know whether, 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 whether he asked this so directly, but <laughs> somehow I attribute the question to him is, <laughs> so can you describe this type of diagram somehow? Okay. And <laughs> In the following, I, I have to distinguish a little between strongly everywhere equivalent and weakly everywhere equivalent. So strongly everywhere equivalent means D and D prime represent the same knot. And uh, weakly everywhere equivalent means D and D prime represent different knots. Of course, you say 
whatever d prime you get is should represent the same node, but it may be different or the same as the one that d represents. Okay, and this I need I need this distinction in the following, so I fix this terminology here. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> as I said, it is uh, suggestive to focus on the case that d prime is not. So when d prime is unknotted, this is the everywhere trivial case, and uh, I discussed this already a little. Okay. <laughs> Also, let, m let us fix that D is prime. So what does prime mean? Prime means like the following. Okay. So it doesn't look like this. Okay. Okay. So when you have two diagrams, you can build connected sum. Okay. So when prime means you do not have a curve which intersects transversely the diagram in exactly two points, and inside and outside there, is, there are crossings. Okay. Of, cor of course, you can always intersect it in a way that it looks like this. Okay, but uh, this is okay. This is this is not what you want. But when there is crossing here and here, then the diagram is not prime. <laughs> no. One can infer about the composite case. I mean, about the not prime case from the prime case. It is not so difficult. But uh, let me skip it. Okay, this is a bit technical. So anyway, do, prime is not a very strong restriction. So, and here are some constructions of such diagrams. Okay. <laughs> so. I, I use this, okay, I use a, a tangle which looks like this, okay, so you have, you have uh, twists, they go vertically and then I compose this twist horizontally, so you get something like this, okay. <laughs> and, okay, so what can you, what can you produce, okay, one thing that you can produce is you can close this up, so you can produce a pretzel diagram, pretzel diagram looks like this, okay, so, you have several copies of this, this is always a twist, so it looks like something like this, okay? Okay, <laughs> and I count this, say I say P for a twist. Okay, so then you put the same thing here, here. Uh, okay, <laughs> yeah, so you put, I, put, I put this number P and this Q times, and then I connect like that. Okay, so in my case it is important okay, that I put the same number everywhere, otherwise it doesn't work. So, so you can get this kind of diagram. Okay, <laughs> then you can get. Okay, what else can you get? <laughs> so you can get something like this. <laughs> so, I mean, to see that this is everywhere cruel, it is not very surprising. So whenever crossing you change, you make one of these to p minus two, but you can cyclically permute this, so you always get the same. Okay. So, <laughs> another construction goes like this. Like, it looks like a three braid. So you connect like this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. Okay, and then you close up. So you have a box on the left, box or the left, right, left, right, left, right. Okay, and then you, okay, and you, you have, um, say, let's see, I call this here L. Okay, so I put L here. Okay, so. So this is the closure of a braid, okay. and you have k copies. So this is one copy, two copy, copies, and k copies. Okay. And of course, you must be careful that you get a knot, so you have you get some restrictions. Okay, L should be odd, and three, k should not be divisible by three. Okay. <laughs> so something else that you can do is the following. <laughs> okay. Now you do not put the boxes vertically, but you put them horizontally. That looks something like this. So now I can still close this. Okay. Of course, okay, this is not really a braid anymore, okay? But <laughs> it is a braid type, okay, if you want, okay, closure. Okay. So the orientation is now no, no longer just upward. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And here you can, so here the twists go this way. Okay. So in each of these boxes the twists go this way. Okay, and of course you have to take the same, uh, the same, the same number of twists. And you can easily see when, <laughs> so when this is even, okay, when this is even always works. Okay, and if it is, uh, if it is odd, 
then you have to suppose that the, uh, that the number 333 is not divisible by, uh, k is not divisible by 3. Anyway, so you have this kind of construction. And then the next thing that you can do is, um, okay, so remember here you have twists. Okay, so what you, can, what you can do next is, you can replace each twist here or here, okay, here or, or here or here, by a, by a tangle. Which looks li which looks like this. Okay. Instead of one crossing, you put now three crossings in the opposite direction. So what you get is, okay, it looks something like this. Okay. And you may have more. Okay. So you may have more. Okay. So instead of having one twist going this way, each crossing now is in turn to three crossings but in the opposite direction. Okay. So that you get now, instead of five crossings, you have five groups of three crossings. And I do this everywhere. So and the reason why w it works for three is that because when you change a crossing here, okay, when you change a crossing, okay, when you change a crossing, then this reduces to one. So when you have one, then you can apply a flip. You can move this one along. So when you have one with something, so when you have one with p, 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 whatever, okay, you, there is a flip, and you can move this along. So you can move the p here, and the crossing is here. Right? Okay. The flips allow you to move a single crossing along. For doesn't work for two or for three. This is the reason why for three it works. Okay. It works when I put three crossings in this direction, but it doesn't work for more. Okay. <laughs> so, so these are essentially the four constructions. Okay. <laughs> so, and of course, I can do this here. I can do this also here. Here, it looks like this. Okay. I have to put it in this direction, so it looks something like that. So then you have five p groups of three crossings, and then you connect them this way, okay? And then <laughs> this goes like this. Okay, now you imagine you have something like this here, the, uh, all the, all the way along. Okay. So this is no longer a pretzel diagram, but it is some type of arborescent diagram. Okay. So these are our constructions. Okay. <laughs> and uh, okay. Um, For not okay, for not diagrams, they are all positive. This means if you put an orientation of the crossings, all the crossings look this way, or the other way. Okay, so you can of course take the mirror image of it, and all the crossings would look this way. Okay? But the point is, you don't have this and this together anywhere in these diagrams. So this is a special property of these diagrams. Okay, which means essentially, you can easily see that oh, that <laughs> this implies weakly everywhere equivalent. Whenever you have a diagram and all crossings are positive and you switch a crossing, then it changes the link type. Okay. So, so this is something that what can be easily argued. Okay. So, and, and the question is, okay, suggestive question, is this everything? Okay. So if we exclude, okay, if we exclude the case of D prime knotted, okay, so this is the, the case of everywhere trivial diagrams. Okay. If it, this is everywhere equivalent, but not everywhere trivial, do these constructions produce you everything? Okay. So you can ask about this. Okay. <laughs> so another another question. Okay. <laughs> so I in particular, if D is strongly everywhere equivalent, okay, <laughs> does this mean that uh, does this mean that this is unknotted? Okay. <laughs> so for weakly for weakly everywhere equivalent, we have these constructions. Okay. For strongly everywhere equivalent, okay, <laughs> the question is, can you get anything else? Okay, these constructions don't give you anything. Okay. <laughs> so do we have that this is unknotted? And essentially, this means you don't have anything more than uh, the, everywhere, the everywhere trivial case. Okay. And <laughs> a, consequence, okay, a, a consequence of this too is, whenever D prime is unknotted, is this always positive? Okay. <laughs> so in, we said... <laughs> Whenever in these diagrams I switch a crossing, that it is non-trivial, except in a few cases. Of course, the trefoil diagram, okay, the trefoil diagram is also of this sort, okay. So I have three boxes of one crossing. 
Okay. So this is, of course, a very general special case. But in general, okay, this will produce your uh, diagrams which are not, where D prime is knotted. Okay. So when you change a crossing here, then this is not the unknot. Okay. <laughs> so, so and, and the question is, is this always positive? Okay. So this is a simple, uh, I mean, a simple special case of these two others. So, so can you have diagrams where this and this occur simultaneously? Okay. So these constructions don't produce these diagrams. Okay. So and so everything is true up to 18 crossing, up to genus 3 and for genus 4. Okay. So genus, okay, genus means uh, what I mean here is the genus of the canonical Seifert surface. Okay. So I have some technique to check this for some type of uh, this kind of diagrams and Essentially, from classification results of rational and Montezinos links, probably one can prove this also for, for, for this type of diagrams. Okay. I honestly say with a minor question mark because I haven't done all the details, but uh, I mean, there is a way to do it. Okay. Uh, I will say about three blades later. Okay. So maybe let me skip, let me skip the technical details. Okay. <laughs> Uh, a curious, okay, a curious consequences of this construction is you can see that these constructions, okay, these uh, these constructions produce diagrams of all crossing numbers except those which are of the form two times a power of three. <laughs> so, a curious question, okay, consequence of this construction is: Do you have everywhere equivalent? Prime, okay, I said I fixed that I work only on prime diagrams. Uh, not the diagrams with two times, uh, two times a power of three crossings. Okay, so prime is important. Okay, and the reason why prime is important is you, okay, so you take for example this one, okay, so this is nine crossing, okay, so this is, okay, this is a three, three, three pretzel knot, and then it connected summit with itself. So you connected some the nine the three 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 pretzel with itself is it's a composite diagram and you, uh, because this is every equivalent if you take two copies the connected sum of this is also every equivalent. So the question is not interesting for composite diagrams but for prime diagrams interesting. In fact, it is really true. Okay, okay for six crossings. Okay, for six crossings we had this here. We had this list and then there is this one. Okay, this sporadic diagram is for six crossings. Okay. So for six crossings, there is this sporadic diagram which doesn't fall into these constructions. Okay. But for 18 crossings, it is really true. Okay. It is really true that there is no prime knotted everywhere equivalent diagram of 18 crossings. Okay. So I, I check this exhaustive. Okay. It is really true. Okay. So and of course now the, 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 okay, the, 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 I mean the provocation. Okay. So this is really a provocation. Uh, is how about 54? So the next, the next problematic case would be 54. So okay, okay. I mean, if you can find a knotted everywhere equivalent diagram of 54 crossing, then of course you would answer the question negatively whether the, co the constructions are exhaustive. But yeah, yeah. so okay. so okay. Now this uh, this business can be somewhat okay generalized to link diagrams. Okay and. I will mostly f uh, have to discuss the unoriented case. Okay, so whenever you, okay, whenever um, I talk about unorient of everywhere current diagram of link, I again say that D prime should present the same link, but I mean it in the unoriented sense. Okay, so I talk about unoriented links. Okay. <laughs> because uh, the reason why I focus, uh, f focus on unoriented is because the constructions that I have they work for unoriented. Okay, the, the oriented case is a little bit more difficult. Okay, <laughs> so and um, the construction K okay, of this uses this checkerboard. Okay, the idea is that essentially a diagram is determined by a checkerboard graph, which means you color regions so that neighboring regions have opposite color, and then you can put say a vertex for every black regions and connect it uh, along a crossings with an edge, with a neighboring opposite region along that cross. Okay, so you get a graph, and <laughs> this graph is in generally signed. Okay, 
So, so every edge of this graph carries a sign plus minus. Okay? So you can fix it this way. Okay? <laughs> if the edge looks locally this way, then you give it a plus sign or a minus sign. And the alternating diagrams are though where all the edges are positive or all are negative. Okay? These are the cases where essentially you don't need to sign the crossings. But for non-alternating diagrams, you have a sign. And this is called Kaufman sign. Okay, so this sign is very is different from this. Okay, so this is so this I like calling this code I, I like calling this keen sign. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this is an oriented thing and it is different from the Kaufman sign that you get when you fix a checkerboard cover. Okay. <laughs> and okay, one way of constructing everywhere equivalent diagrams for links okay, is by taking edge transitive graphs. Okay, so this is graph theoretical business. <laughs> you call a graph edge transitive if for every two edges there is a symmetry of the graph that maps the one edge to the other. Okay, and they have been studied in combinatorics for some time. <laughs> okay, they are, uh, so, <laughs> so for example, the case of three connected and dually three connected graphs. Okay, these are called um, um, tessellations. Okay, and then there are nine of those. Okay? <laughs> so here interesting is okay, you get the five platonic solids. So the white skeletons of the platonic solids are five of them. Then you get <laughs> two more by taking the median graph of the cube, which means so median graph means whenever you have an edge, you put a vertex on the middle of the edge, and then you connect two vertices which are edges neighboring along a face. Okay, this is how you produce the median graph. Okay, and the median graph of the cube, and the median graph of the dodecahedron of this one. Okay, <laughs> so. <laughs> Seven and the other the planar dual. Uh, the, the other two are the planar duals of, of the. So this is called icoso dodecahedron and this is called cubic dodecahedron. Okay, so, so in the case of a cube, it looks like this. Okay. So this is the cube net. Okay. And then you you put vertices here. And you connect like this. Okay. This is how this goes. <laughs> So, and the dual of that. Okay, so this is the cube of the head, it's the blue. Okay. So, and then there are also there, so the non tessellation the tessellation cases are also known. Okay, so this, this graph can be studied for some time by graph theories. Okay, and if you have such a graph, okay, you can produce, okay, you can produce an everywhere equivalent diagram from this graph in the following way. Okay, so, Let's say the graph should be cut free, which means that the diagram should be prime. Okay, so you want to get a prime diagram. <laughs> and what do you do is the following, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> so, so, let, so let's say we take we take this graph. Okay, this is the okay. so, so this is the, the tetrahedral tetrahedral graph. Okay, from this week we, we do the following. So first of all we thicken this. Okay, so we can thicken this and get something like that. Okay, this is okay, so this is not so terribly interesting, but what we do now, okay, every edge is now a bent. Okay, and on every edge we can put a tangle. So, and because the graph is edge transitive, if you do the, if you put here the proper thing, you will get a diagram which is everywhere equivalent. Okay, and again, essentially the, um, okay, the, the, okay, the, the restrictions here, what I put here is again pretzel, tangles, or twists in the same way as I put them here, and in the other construction. Okay, so again you can put twists here, so you can put twists this way, you can put this the other way, or you can put tangles where you have three crossings and then you have a bunch of dots. Okay. So, roughly speaking, but you must be a little careful. Okay. <laughs> you cannot put in every direction. Either you put in this direction for every edge, or you put in the opposite direction for every edge. Okay. So you cannot put the twists here this way, <laughs> and then you, you put them here the other way. So, <laughs> here the twists go opposite to the edge, here the twists go parallel to the edge. Okay. <laughs> 
and of, you cannot do that. Okay, so you must be a little careful with uh, with with the direction. Okay, but if you do this properly, okay, if you do this properly, you will, you will end up with uh, an every equivalent diagram. Okay. <laughs> so and this is this is essentially because whenever crossing you switch, you get look at the checkerboard graph, and because this G is uh, every, uh, edge transitive, you can move everything to everything. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> So there is uh, okay, and there is there is one okay, there is one uh, reflective case. Okay, maybe I will I will skip the detail. So there is one more thing that you can do when the graph has a flip. Okay, when the graph has a flip, okay, so when you get, when you can flip this, when you can flip this this way, then what you can do is okay, when you have your edge here, you can put you can put two twists like this. So, <laughs> and then this this flip here can exchange with this with that, so it is okay. okay. You cannot do it for more, okay? But this this reflection of symmetry allows you to put two boxes, I mean two two twists like this. Okay. So this is an extra case, but I will not this. Uh, so I will try not to discuss it too much. Okay. <laughs> but you should be careful. You can do it this way, but you cannot do it the other way. So this one this way doesn't necessarily work. So if you have an edge flipping symmetry, you put you put the twist this way, okay, not not the other way. You put the other way, and you get into trouble. So, okay. So here you see the the difference between putting the putting the tangles this way and putting the tangles the other way. Okay. So if you take the the theta curve, okay, so this graph, okay, and you put the three two tangles, so this tangle. Okay. If you put it along the edge, then you get this. If you put it opposite to the edge, and you get that. And this, of course, these are two different diagrams, so you have to be careful with the orientation. Okay, <laughs> and okay. <laughs> so this explains. Okay, this explains, for example, this sort of diagram. Okay, so the pretzel diagram. The pretzel diagram. St you start with a graph that has two vertices and n edges, and then do this construction, and then you can produce this kind of thing. Okay. Of course, here, you, since we talk about links, there is no restriction on what you do. Okay. You, there is no restriction that, for example, p should be odd and, and the number of edges should be odd or something like that. Okay. So these restrictions uh, are no longer relevant if you talk about links. Okay. <laughs> but this doesn't explain this kind of thing. Okay. This construction still doesn't explain this. So when you look at what is the graph of, of this kind of braids, then it looks like this. You have a wheel. Okay. So you have a vertex connected to a cycle. Okay. And this, is, this graph is not edge transitive. But still these diagrams are everywhere equivalent. And the reason is because this uh, checkerboard graph has a dual has a dual ambiguity. If you take the, uh, the graph and the, the dual, they give you the same diagram. So in fact, you have the right to switch between the graph and the dual, and this gives you a little bit more freedom. And this is what I uh, define here. Okay, I call G dually edge transitive if it has the following property. First of all, it is self-dual. Okay, this sort of graph is self-dual. Okay, <laughs> so and then <laughs> you need the following: you need the partition of the edges. Okay. <laughs> So here you see the example. Okay. <laughs> so with the following property, whenever you have two edges in the same in the same part, then there is a symmetry which maps uh, the this part to itself and the, the the first edge to the second edge. Okay. And then if they are in different parts, and there is a symmetry which maps the dual of the first to the second and the dual of this edge to that edge. Okay. <laughs> so and the example the example of the of such a thing is here. Okay, so the wheel, so the, this wheel graph has this property. Okay, so you make the first set, <laughs> you make the first set to be the star of this vertex, and you make the the other set to be the the remaining cycle. Okay, <laughs> so whenever you have two of these spokes, you can move the one spoke to the other. Whenever you have a spoke and something in the cycle, you can take the dual of this, okay, and then move it to the cycle. Roughly speaking, okay, so you have the freedom to take the dual, and this is the reason why you get a little bit more. Okay, of course, okay, for example, this. Okay, in this case, okay, in this case, so you just you just take all the edges, and the other set is empty. But this case is not very interesting. Okay, so in 
Essentially, you can assume here that the both sets are, have precisely half of the edges of the graph. Okay? And then you can get this, and you can get also something which are called a twofold wheel. Okay? Then you have every second vertex of the cycle is connected by two spokes, okay? and every second vertex is not connected. Okay? But essentially, that's it. So, there's, so this is not a very rich graph theoretical definition. It just needed it in order to explain that this is what you need to construct diagrams. Okay, so and now it's more or less I explained, so this is not technical stuff, but essentially this, <laughs> what I, the philosophy here is these conditions ascertain you that you can do this kind of construction with that graph, and then you get a diagram. Okay, so maybe here, okay, uh, instead of showing you this technical uh, definition, I show you an example. Okay, <laughs> so these are three links that you get from, from the tetrahedrograph. Okay, I always take the tangle 3, 2. Okay, the first thing that you can do is, okay, the tetrahedrograph is, uh, is edge transitive. So <laughs> I can simply put a 3, 2 tangle along each edge of the graph, and then it looks like this. And you get an alternating diagram. Okay? <laughs> so, but the, the tetrahedrograph is also a wheel graph with three spokes. So <laughs> it is also dually edge transitive. Okay? With, with the one set being the three spoke, the, the uh, three, three, these three vertices. So these three vertices. Okay, so this is blue. Uh, this is red. Okay, this is blue. Okay, and this is red. <laughs> in. So, and if I do, if I use this decomposition, then I can get, I get something else. And I get something like this. Now I have put now all these two, three go like this. And then these are the sort of diagrams that you obtain here. So this is, of course, something different from this. See? <laughs> In fact, you see, these diagrams are non-alternating, and these diagrams are alternating. Okay? And of course, you can do it also the opposite way around. So now you put all the, all the, all the two, three tangles in the opposite direction, then you get again another non-alternating tangle. And these are, they are all different. Okay? So <laughs> I think this one, <laughs> this one has four components, and this one has three or something like that. Okay? So these are every, anyway, so these are different diagrams. Okay? So you have several ways of creating these graphs, uh, these diagrams, okay? and what I knew is that it, you don't get anything new for knots. Okay? So the, 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 the questions for knots remain. These constructions do not give anything new for knots. Okay? For knots, is everything that I had before. Okay? And one, okay, one question I had, is this exhaustive? Okay? So you can still again ask the question, is can you produce everything by these constructions? Okay. And the answer is no. Okay. There are totally different examples. I just say in a minute. But it is true in another case. Okay. So look at braids. Okay. What braids are, I don't want to, okay, uh, to recapture in detail. So most of you should know. You have, um, you have uh, art in generators, and you can multiply braids by stacking up. But then you have also closure. So you have a, you have a braid word, okay, a braid word. This gives you, a, on the closure, a diagram. Yeah, so a braid gives you a knot or a link, and a braid word gives you a diagram. So maybe I should keep this distinction separate. Okay? This is important. Okay? And you know, okay, all the, all the links are closures of braids. So here is okay, the answer for, for closed three braids. Okay, what diagrams of this sort okay, are everywhere equivalent? Okay, and I need this delta, which is the full twist. Okay, or um, delta is the half twist, and the square is the full twist. Okay. <laughs> so, so this is the generator of the center. So <laughs> what is the answer? Okay, you have something like this. Okay, sigma 1, sigma 2 inverse. Okay, this is not very interesting. Okay, this is, so what is this? <laughs> so you can have sigma 1, sigma 2 inverse. This looks like this. Okay, and then close. So this is, this is uh, an unknown diagram with two nugatory crossings. Then you can have this one. So this is something that you sh also should know. This is the figure 8 node diagram. Okay. So, so and then, you have, then you have two more. You have sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 1, inverse, sigma 2, inverse. Okay. This is another unknown diagram. So this is another anode diagram, and then you have <laughs> the square of that. Okay, and what this is is um, 
this is this one this is this one this is another three braid diagram so essentially this okay the first families are these sporadic cases okay these sporadic cases <laughs> this okay this is also something that we saw and these are the three braids that you have a total symmetry and you have also these split cases but the interesting thing is here okay the second family gives you a, a word that represents any central element so a power of the foot which is a central element and any positive word does the job okay so <laughs> so okay, okay not no i don't want to discuss okay don't want to discuss the 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 tools but the interesting thing is that okay the central words every positive word is actually a subword of a word that represents a central element so you have totally un unsymmetric things okay, something which is totally different from these constructions okay. so so there is more okay so this this is why it is it seems so complicated even for three breaths sorry the situation is different okay so there is something totally un un unsymmetric but there is one case okay where i have the solution and this is for two component links okay and for two component links you really get only this okay what you expect so you get for two component links and if you you restrict yourself to oriented okay, to oriented uh, everywhere equivalence then i can prove and this is relatively easy that you always get this only the symmetric situation but, and in this case this means you always get the pretzel and the pretzel where you replace a crossing by three crossings okay, and this is all for two components and if you okay i must emphasize oriented okay so i wanted the diagrams obtained by switching one crossings to be equivalent as oriented diagrams then okay then these constructions that i have are exhaustive thank you <laughs>